Thank you, Madam Chair. Appreciate uh, the flexibility. Senator Capito, uh, one of those uh, days you're all familiar with, smack between Homeland Security and budget. So uh, with my limited time, appreciate the opportunity to raise a couple of issues and priorities and ask some questions. Uh, and I'll begin by uh, uh, sharing with you, Mr. Secretary, sort of my background and the reason for my interest on your digitization comments. Mm -hmm. You know, at my home state of California, we've long believed in the importance and necessity of recording and remembering our shared history. Uh, for uh, students of California history, uh, and for those, and maybe news for those who uh, aren't aware, in 1850, the very first law signed by the very first governor of California uh, established the, the requirement of the maintenance of the public archives. Mm -hmm very first law by the very first legislature and governor that tells you what a priority is. Mm -hmm. uh, today, the California State Archives is a division of the California Secretary of State's office, uh, the position I had the honor of holding for six years prior to joining the Senate. And one of my priorities at the time was to make sure that, yes, the historical treasures of California, uh, as required, were not just preserved, not just protected, but as available as possible for the general public to view and to enjoy. And part of my strategy was to increase digitization efforts of the state's archives, collections, uh, curating exhibits, et cetera, so that they could be accessed by any person with an internet connection, not just anywhere in the state, but frankly, anywhere around the world. And we did this through strategic utilization of state resources as well as engaging in public-private partnerships. So I know the mission of public access of our shared history is something that the Smithsonian shares, uh, but the incredible knowledge and history held within the museums is for the most part still limited to only those who are able to come and visit in person. You've spoken to digitization through your opening remarks, and I'd like you to just expand for a minute on what other uh, uh, short-term and long-term uh, goals there might be or plans there might be to share our content with a broader audience. Well, I think you thank you very much. Um, you know, when I actually did honest work as a historian, now I shake hands, I was a California scholar. So I know a lot about what California has done in its archives. And for me, what's important is to realize that the treasures of the Smithsonian are too important just to be in the hands of those that can come visit. So we've really made a major concerted effort, first through the educational work that we've done, to make sure that people have access to the collections through the Smithsonian Learning Lab. You can go into that and you can, oh, type, oh, California, or type women's suffrage or butterflies and get everything the Smithsonian has. We've also made sure that by the work that we've done with both the Latino Museum and with the Smithsonian Women's History Initiative, what we've done is made sure that those stories are being told so that these museums are being birthed digitally. So therefore, we're making sure that story is being told. It's important that every museum, from the Air and Space Museum to the African American Museum to the Museum of American History, has major projects of making their collections accessible digitally. But what we want to make sure is we also want to make sure that we give people the right portals into that, not just simply putting out material, but really making it of use for teachers, for educators, for parents. So this is really a priority of ours. And, and uh, if I can um, also just add, not just static representations of what's in the collection, but with an eye towards that user experience, Absolutely. even if it's digitally, someday a VR experience, mm -hmm. and maybe someday soon. Um, second, I just want to echo uh, the prior comments made by the chair, by you, Mr. Secretary, on the, our commitment to the two new museums that were recently approved, uh, the, sharing the stories of American women and Latinos across the country is part of telling a more inclusive story of the United States of America. I appreciate the update on the site selection process. We'll add my voice to uh, those others that are urging an on-the-mall location. And I know there's uh, multiple options there. But uh, in my final seconds here, just want to raise the uh, topic of uh, sort of maintenance, in some cases deferred maintenance, and the increased uh, risk of climate change. I know you read, as I read recently in the New York Times, an article about uh, uh, flooding issues in a number of the institutions. Um, 
climate change is only going to continue to become uh, or to uh, uh, to grow in terms of the threat that it represents. Uh, what help do you need from Congress uh, to help address this issue before we begin to lose treasures? Thankfully, we haven't lost anything yet, from my understanding. But what do you need from Congress? Well, obviously, climate change, especially in Washington, is a federal issue, right? It's the National Park Service. It's not just the Smithsonian. What we've done is really two things. One is we created a climate action plan, which allows us to make sure that, one, as an institution, we're thinking creatively about sustainability. What are the things we need to do? So, for example, when we built the National Museum of African American History and Culture, it was the first green museum on the mall. So sustainability was at the heart of that. Um, When we make changes like we're doing at the National Air and Space Museum, it's also about sustainability and putting in materials that would protect through pumps and walls to protect the collections. What we've also done is recognize that we had to make changes. So we have moved most of the vulnerable collections up so that that's not an issue. But we've also had a special response group of staff whose job it is in an emergency to rescue collections. So we've, we've taken all of those steps. I think the reality is the challenge is going to be how do we, how does Congress help the mall, the entire mall, deal with the issue of flooding? Um, part of that is what we're building in terms of being able to make sure that we can handle flooding, but also is to have a plan that includes the Smithsonian, the National Park Service, that allows us to come up with the right strategies. Thank you. I'll just warn you that next week there's going to be uh, two young Americans, one age nine, one age seven, (laughs) who uh, are going to be visiting some of the Smithsonians. They visited a few National Parks already, have their Junior Ranger badge collection going. (laughs) And so I don't know if it's a a passport book they're going to be stamping or something, but uh, I'm sure you'll be hearing them, no doubt. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you.